Iran's military leaders marked the 37th anniversary of its Islamic revolution by publicly mocking the U.S. sailors it detained in Iran last month. That's just one example of the tug of war between the country's hardliners and the moderates. Yeah, that was maddening to see that recreated. And our next guest says Iran and its culture are at a tipping point, and the women are at the center of the struggle. Dr. Nina Ansari is the author of The Jewels of Allah, The Untold Story of Women in Iran, and she joins us now. Thanks for being with us. Thank you for having well, me. Well, let's first go, go back in history a little bit. You say before 1979, before the Islamic Revolution, and Ayatollah Khomeini came in and, and forced the veil and separated institutions by gender. Women on college campuses were wearing mini skirts, really? Yes. yes. The Pahlavi monarchy essentially emancipated the Iranian woman after centuries of seclusion and the church and state being intertwined. And uh, basically what they did was westernize Iran uh, overnight. Uh, what was understood and embraced was only by a small segment of a Tra significantly traditional population that did not really embrace all the changes that the Pahlavi monarchy instituted. One, because you know you cannot dictate uh, an overnight trend towards a westernized progressive atmosphere after centuries of having uh, you know a culture of seclusion, women being veiled. So a very small segment mm -hmm. of this population really embraced and understood what the Pahlavi monarchy did. Now the irony of Iran is that with the seeds of a feminist itinerary that the Pahlavis implanted um, over half a century ago have ironically burgeoned during a patriarchal post-revolutionary climate. Well that's interesting that you say that because the image we get in the West is that that the women are uh, isolated and they're kept down, but you say that might not necessarily be accurate. No, actually that's inaccurate. One is that Iran has a highly educated female population with women actually outnumbering men in higher education. So, so education, it's okay. Uh, sky's the limit if you're a woman. Yeah, you know you're right. allowed to have an education. Initially, when Khomeini came to power, women were banned from certain fields of study, um, including agriculture, veterinary sciences, mining. Slowly, through their ongoing activism, there is a vibrant, believe it or not, women's right. Can women vote? Yes, they can. But we they have, cannot run for presidency. Right. Yeah, and and you know we have some specifics that we can share with our viewers uh, about women in Iran by the numbers. Only nine of 290 parliament members are women. 65 percent of university students are women, and 18 percent of the Iranian workforce are women. How can That's women right. win over even more rights? Well, this is a great question. Right now, we have the Iran has the upcoming parliamentary elections. An unprecedented 1,200 women registered. Um, 580 of them have been allowed to run. Uh, that's unprecedented. Uh, you know, the, the numbers are very low, meaning that you have a highly educated female population that has not only been debilitated through the sanctions, but also via the gender discriminatory laws. So the sanctions have basically been a double-edged sword where the female population is concerned, so much so that women uh, often decide to undertake businesses from inside their homes in order not to sure. enter this, uh, you know, male-dominated right. yeah, climate. Persecuted. Right, exactly. But the the wonderful thing about these women is their resilience. There you go. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's the key. Uh, this is a side of Iran a lot of people are not familiar with, so check out the brand new book. It's called Jules of Allah, The Untold Story of Women in Iran. Dr. Nina Ansari, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you.